All right. We're here with Tessa Karlov. Black White Tokens. Our tokens have Vigilance and Lifelink. Pretty cool. This other uh, line of text here is when something dies and it has anything happen when it dies, it happens again. So say Liliana's in play, things die. You draw two cards instead of one per thing dying. <laughs> There's not a lot of that in the game, unfortunately, but there might be enough to do something with that side of it. But for the most part, it's just black-white tokens. Um, but for the other ability, we have like Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, um, the other blue, blue artist, Blood Artist, Bastion of Remembrance, and the literal other Blood Artist in Sanguine Breaststroke. So some death triggers there seems seems kind of neat. Um, we have the other kind of black-white token thing here which I've played as a commander in the past, I believe. I think it's not as good as um, the one we're playing right now, but you can just do both at the same time, right? Just toss it in there. We have the token doublers that are in white. Um, I Anointed Procession and I think Mondrak are the two in white. So that's pretty cool. We're running Rezug. I know I just played it as a commander, but what's neat about Rezug is if you reanimate something like a Blood Artist... That is a serious problem for your opponent moving forward, because now you have this looming artifact that is much harder to deal with than a creature um, in the form of a blood artist. <laughs> so that seems kind of crazy, right? I think there's enough in here for Rezug to feel comfortable, so I'm going to try it. I think it's a sleeper card if you're reanimating things that cost less than three. <laughs> right? Just Less than three, not just trying to do uh, Gristlebrand stupid stuff. Uh, Norn's Wellspring is also pretty neat when things die. Uh, if your commander's in play, this happens twice, so you scry once, twice. Um, every single death would uh, give you enough immediately to tap this and draw. But that's not really too big of a deal, because when you're a token strategy, it's not hard to get, like, two tokens to die anyways. Um, this probably isn't as good as Phyrexian Arena, but maybe it is, I don't know. There's the white card that wants, like, 15, um, where are you? It's an artifact that wants a bunch of things to There it is. Halo Fountain. This is probably not the deck for it. It's extremely difficult to get 15 creatures in play. <laughs> it's, like, very hard to do that. Um, if, you, if, you're, if you're getting close, things can die to removal, sweepers. Um, this can just literally get blown up by your opponent if it's that spooky scary. So I don't really like this. And there are better token strategies that do this uh, way faster anyways. And they are mostly green-white. It's funny that the token is actually green and white too, which would probably indicate that green-white is the color for that. But definitely not here in my opinion. It's like Riz the Redeemed is probably what you want to be doing for that. So that's why that's not in here. Um, Ao, I don't know how to pronounce this. We'll just call it the Dawn Sky. This is a really cool one. I know there's a one for each color, but the one in white seems pretty neat if you can trigger this twice when things die. So, I'm going to try that. I don't think I've really ever played this before. This seems pretty cool. Um, there are some Planeswalkers that really love when things die. Lolth being the probably most prominent one next to Liliana Dreadhorde General. Doubling up your Worm Coil tokens and then maybe either tripling or quadrupling them, right? You have Anointed Procession in play and this. It dies twice. You get the trigger twice, and then each trigger comes with twice as many tokens. Obviously, dream scenario, and then you just die to a board wipe anyways. <laughs> but, we'll see. Um, I could probably try something like Platinum Angel in here, if we can just make a wide board, not really die to any incoming creature damage, and then try to get a Platinum Angel in play, or something like that. But, for now, eh, not really. I think Shieldred is... Our, our pseudo platinum angel, <laughs> especially with like the one ring and you know, weird stuff like necropotence. Although this doesn't trigger the shield druid's ability, still just pretty good. Midnight Reaper, another thing that cares about things dying. So you double up on this. This could kill you, you know, if you're not careful. You have like 10 creatures in play, or even five, and Tessa's in play, and they cast a board wipe, and you draw what would that be 10, and you just die because you took 10. Could be a problem. Um, it's not really a problem for Necropotence, but it could be a problem here if you're not 
um, in control of it. <laughs> so you gotta be careful there. Pack rats copies are tokens. So that's another cool thing about this. And uh, yeah, so everything feels pretty cool with the commander, which I like. Everything's like, oh, this is nice. Works with the commander. That's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. So let's try it. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's get to 600 subscribers. I am like six away. <laughs> so let's do that. Please. Please. This hand is less weird. This is the werewolf thing, right? Yeah. Uh, Alright, we're light on removal and also no mana rocks, but that's fine. That's really bad. Um, this one? That's not a werewolf, but this is a huge discounter. I'm surprised they're willing to trade. Tokens aren't really that useful for me right now. Should I play this or like something else? Nah, fine. If I get Kaya, it's pretty nice to keep this around forever. I also get two one ones when this repeatedly dies with Kaya's plus. It's kind of cool, I guess. And this will never cost more than four. It's not terribly relevant. I unfortunately will respect anything, which I'd rather not, but... I really don't anticipate that as a favorable outcome. Okay, so this blows up that. This is also pretty big, and it also has a death trigger. The death trigger isn't terribly useful, though. They did actually have a one minute green spell. That's actually funny. They did have a one minute green spell. Alright, I I just can't afford to let my opponent continuously draw. If you have, like, giant growth, that's adorable. I don't really care. Must be Lightning Bolt or Braid. Braid's the most common one. Nope, just a weird burn spell. You got it. Okay, this is also pretty nice for Strike Flying. Um, I kind of want Kaya in play, but another creature is fine as well. Because until my commander dies, can't really swing. Well, I mean, they could just go wide and swing, but like this is... You don't want this to happen twice, basically. That's my point. Okay, sure. I debate if it was worth the trade to actually just kill this 4-6, but I guess they have nothing else going on. My opponent did draw a card off this already, too, so... Alright, I've got all the stuff. <laughs> I'm most comfortable with this, so I will do that. I don't really care to attack their commander. I'll just uh, do this here. Because this is just like a huge problem that is now going to come back if it dies. I could die to like a out of nowhere crater hoof, but this seems like a werewolf deck, even though I really haven't actually seen any werewolves. Oh, oh no, now we are. Now we are. Okay. Now we're getting the wolfy boys. Furries are coming out of hiding. There they are. Look at them. Actually, not quite. They're still. I guess it's still uh, day. Okay, that does have first strike, but like this dying is. Just so stupid for my opponent. Yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, look at the board state, right? Like, look at all of this. They even have, like, a layer that could be pretty big. But this is stupid. I mean, the death triggers are nice, though. With my own cards. Having them die. It's not, like... It's not nothing. All right. Pack rat's good early. I can get rid of things I just... I won't be able to cast. <laughs> That's nice, I guess. They're 
two twos and their three threes and their four fours. That is not at all what I expected, I'm not gonna lie. I will probably play you and then I can harass later with some life stealing. Like if I play this and this, if I draw land, I get two blood artists in play. Then if the board gets wiped, that is a lot of life all at once that I could steal. Which is pretty nice. That is notably not second white source, although I guess we're basically playing against Sithis twice. Um, Swingies? But then I'm not playing one of these. Okay. Could be worse. Opponent needs something to interact with my board at this point. Can't just be uh, drawing a bunch of cards and doing nothing with them. Reliquary Tower? <laughs> okay. I guess we like a large hand, but what do we do with that if we're dead? Getting death triggers? I'm wondering if I should have played Tessa in that turn cycle or not. It means that Dryad lives. I don't really know if that's relevant at all. I think I would much rather have um, this in play. Especially with this cutthroat. So I think this makes more sense. I get like more creatures in play this way, right? I get, I get a creature anyways, but I also get cutthroat so I don't die to... Or I don't instantly lose to Wrath of God or something. Is there a payoff for the second land having me not activate to kill this? That is not necessarily it. But they're back up to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright, we, we did it. We actually killed them. Look at that. Nice. Wow. I think that's the first time I won with a pack rat. <laughs> and it could have been better, too, if I made another rat. Um, I wouldn't have known that at the time. And the life gain was kind of worth it because I would eventually gain life to do this. And also cutthroat would just make more tokens yeah nice wow a pack rat lethal dude i did it oh off the bucket list it goes oh i did it <laughs> okay we took out even more top end because we never get to it and when we do it just isn't good enough to do anything so took those out and added a bunch of two mana removal spells to actually just come back when somebody plays like an early mana dork that just pushes me out of the game because they just time walk me and I can't do anything and uh can just buy me time right I don't really want to cast sweepers quite yet I don't want to put them in my deck because again it's I don't think I'm amassing a large enough board with like blood artists and stuff to like sweep my own board and just one shot my opponent so I'm gonna just slow it down a little bit here see how that goes I mean they just mulliganed Oh, there they go. Um, hmm. Hmm. Hmm? It's fine. Maybe can bait out something here, and then... Well, speaking of interesting, that is not what I wanted to see. Um... I think... This is less universal, so I'll use that one. It also costs more mana, so that's fine. I can actually Swords Slimefoot, which is irrelevant. And exiling it is a lot stronger than not doing that, so... That's odd. Oh, this is a sack outlet. Oh, there goes the swords, I guess. <sighs> Dang. Wouldn't have been useful anyways, but still. 
Well, at least if they ever swing, I get an artifact blood artist, which is hilarious. Okay, sure. If I don't draw land, though, none of this matters. Okay, I did draw land. Of all of these, I think Elish Norn is probably the best one. No, this is another layer of protection for Rezug and and also my commander. It's it's fine. It also stops me from getting hit by Slimefoot. Sort of. So they swing and then I just take it because I can't block that. They sack a sapperling, but then the Rezug uh, comes back, so it's not really that big of a deal. Another sack outlet. Ay ay ay. But yeah, this comes back, so. They're willing to kill it twice. Guess that makes sense. Well, I don't have any tokens. Um. I can make two tokens. I could just rush my opponent down. No, let's just play Elish Norn. It is five toughness. They can't kill it before the Brood Moth, and it could be a lot of damage. Because they can't really swing unless I want to pay life, because otherwise they take damage as well, so fine. They had this last turn and didn't use it. That's what they were thinking about. I think, at least. With the, the, the spring's turn. Does this give flying to it? No, it doesn't. Tragic. Season Pyromancer deliberately tapping the pain mana. Instead of the free red here. Unusual. Especially if you wound up not needing this for like double green. It is their only double green, but still kind of unusual. Okay, well, they've committed to paying life, so I don't take, uh, so they don't take damage. That is also really good, too. Let's see what happens when I swing, though. Do I swing with Elishnor? It's got Vigilance. They can block. Oh, it's like a really nice block for them. But if it dies, it comes back. So maybe I do swing. They just pay a, an, an additional life to do this, and this is probably fine, right? Okay, it doesn't even matter, because they could just block and do that. Yeah, so it, it just didn't end up mattering. Um... You? Yeah, I'll do this, and I can leave up swords this way. And when my creatures die, I get to steal life. They're paying life here. They're paying life with the colored lands. Seems pretty nice for me. So what happens if I block this time? Okay, what do you got? There's nothing to reanimate. Okay. Wonder what this card is. They could like discard something. Faithless looting into I I don't know. Reanimating season pyromancer is not really all that useful though. Okay. Yeah, I mean if you want to kill Elishnorn, it just comes back as a flyer, so you can't do that. Like this is, seems kind of fine to me. The drawing cards is unfortunate, but I can't stop everything, so. Okay, so they pay three life to maybe kill my Brood Moth. And then I have... I think we get there. It depends what the mana does here, though. Yep. Yeah. Actually, they don't have to do it again. They could just leave this as a zero one one and not pay another life. Okay, never mind. They're doing it anyways. There's no sapperling. So, they can't do this again. 
they're at an effective one because this is three okay well now you gotta pay life you gotta pay mana otherwise you take damage here so now it's a matter of is this last mana relevant in any way because if it isn't they're dead right because this just kills them. Oh, they took it. Oh, that's such a good draw, too. Oh, no, I have to think. Oh. Take three, or they take three. Oh. That's so tragic. This is an absolute must-answer threat, so fine. They can't just have hard removal. They have to have like I don't know, I don't even know. They have to have exile, but they're black. They have to also have life gain. They need a lot here, but it is possible. It is possible. You cannot draw cards. It has to be in hand already. There's no sapperling for slimefoot. That doesn't do it. They die to the bastion. Unless you have a uh, veil. Veil of Summer? No, that doesn't even stop it, because this doesn't target. Ooh! No, they don't have the mana! They don't have the mana! Oh! Oh, they don't have the mana, dude! Wait a minute, wait a minute. But yeah, it was good on them for trying. I don't believe if they tap this to Court of Calling, which they could have, I don't know if they had enough green. One, two, three. No, they can't tap this for green. They cannot tap this for green. They're at one. One, two. They didn't have enough green, even if they tapped the Chupacabra to uh, Convoke. What a game. Wow. Oh boy. This is only creatures, right? Oh, jeez. I have nothing for 1-2. I'm on the draw. Alright, fine. I don't know. It's like black-white versus black-white, and we're both maybe slow, and I could pan out. That was a strange lag there. Mana Confluence, really? Just two colors? Oh, well, maybe. This is horrible, horrible news for us, though, obviously. Nope, they get the best card in the game. Great. Uh, yep. I've really liked the Banalia. This has been pretty nice, on, especially on three. Like, every time I have this, it feels great. It is a lot of damage, but it's not enough. And it currently doesn't do anything, because my opponent has protection from uh, literally everything. So, ooh, alright. Surely... Am I in, in any way... Okay, you know what? I will respect some kind of, like, stupid card here, I guess. I could die to something that I might not have to die to, so... I don't know. I'm not going to play High Priest in the face of uh, Black White with... All this mana and no creatures of their own. Obzadot does pretty good at killing you without a board presence, which means I have to respect board wipes, which is really, really bad. Sanguine Bond. Whenever you gain life... Okay. Um, I guess that means I must leave up Vanishing Verse in the face of some kind of combo. So I'll play this and put it uh, here? I guess I'll put it on the thing that's most likely to die. But I must avoid dying to that. So they go to one. Okay. They go to one. Shieldred the Apocalypse. Okay. They tap the one ring and I win. Notably, Shieldred was not going to save them anyways. 
They cannot tap their last mana, so they're dead. Wow. That was a weird game. <laughs> what? So they search for glory. They play a... They had a mana rock that was pretty relevant. This, uh, I wouldn't say came back to punish them. Like, like this isn't that big of a deal, right? I should actually probably be running this myself, but... Alright, so if killing a mana dork is not good enough, we can probably just scoop here. I can beat the... Okay, no, can't beat that one. Ugh, I hate it so much. Oh, why does it have to have hexproof? Why do you do these things? Surely there's no four mana ramp spell, though. Okay. I mean, there kind of was, but there also sort of wasn't. Um, Necropotence, and then I uh, pay ten. They made my opponent scoops. See if I find something relevant. I could kill this, but that means they need to not have a land, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, so... Grave Pact? Oh, it feels so slow, though. Oh, boy. Maybe I don't need it, then. Okay. I think these are close to the best seven. Well, that was pretty cool. But uh, not looking too good right now, because we're playing against a Modi. If it wasn't a Modi, this would have been excellent. <laughs> would have been pretty nice. Yep, looks like they just didn't need their um, Druid, which doesn't really surprise me. Emoti at least kind of gives you some amount of time, because it doesn't just win like a Tali might. But uh, that doesn't say much here. Okay, so Grave Pact means I don't really got to worry about an army of, like... I just want to cast Grave Pact. I haven't really gotten any Grave Pact triggers since I've crafted the stupid card, so... Sorry, we got triple black, so let's do that. Uh, yeah. This is a blue deck, though, so this doesn't actually help me that much. I'm not interested in paying more life right now. I don't think... Okay, like I said, nothing probably matters anyways. Okay, well... This doesn't actually uh, get me out of anything. They also made tokens, so now my Grave Pact is even worse. They should just trade with Emoti so they get to recast it. Well, there's probably merit in that. The hell is that? I don't even know what this is. Oh, the green, the green thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Sack two creatures, and then it gets indestructible. Doubles all your stuff. Sure. Well, of everything that could have annihilated me, that uh, I guess didn't. Not trading. So this last card must be relevant, right? If they're not just swinging. This was a free attack, in my opinion. I think they should have went for it. Okay, so we're two... Yeah, all right. Let's pay life. Maybe find something. Um, I'm always doing this here, no matter what. So I'll just do that now. It's always happening. And then I... I guess I pay, like, one more. I can pay maybe one more. Go up to seven. I should have paid some life last turn to hit a land. Not that it would have been terribly relevant, but it would have been useful. Alright, surely this last card isn't anything. Of course it is. Surely it ramps into nothing? Okay, I mean, I guess that's better than... <laughs> better than the alternative. They get a redraw, though, because of the Mind Stone... They can't really find any expensive card, though, but still. This is the longest I've lived against Demodi, so I guess that's something. Just swing with Emoti! What are you doing? Swing with Emoti. Okay, this is a must-answer threat. Kill one of these 1-1s. One Felidar Retreat into Token doesn't do much. We're at six, so I need to... Hmm. 
You? Don't really have any other play. If I pay life, I'm basically dead, so I can't really do that until this Blood Artist does something. I also need my opponent to not draw anything, which is kind of unlikely, but, you know, never know. Never know. Okay. Alright, we untapped. Kind of uh, crazy. So I play Blood Artist, and I play my Commander. I could have played this, but I don't know if I... Maybe I just play this for a token. This costs more mana. I don't know. Let's do that. I'll pay, like, two? And then pass? Oh, boy. This is not really good enough. It's a little too slow right now. The amount of stuff I have to draw, like, dodge. We did it. We did it. My opponent just whiffed. Okay, so this was not good. Um, I'm probably going to say that a lot. Because <laughs> I'm playing every commander ever. You know, at least once. So, this one was not that good. I'm sure there might be a way to, to get more in on the, the tokens. But I don't think there is, right? Like... The deck actually got better when I slowed it down and added removal um, and took out some of the top-end jankiness that I never really got to play because the game just didn't last that long. I died to a board wipe or I died to someone doing something way faster than I am, like a mana dork, into you know a three-mana ramp spell and I'm dead. So uh, if, if I dodged all the green shenanigans, this wasn't too bad. And again, slowing it down was the right call. Uh, for sure. Um, some of the top end was still even kind of questionable. Like, this feels great with your commander in play, but if you're plussing this over and over and your commander's in play, you've probably already won. So I don't even know what this is doing for you, right? Like, the game doesn't really get to turn six. So, well, I mean, it can and does, but you're, you're probably super close to the game already being over at that point. Um... So, yeah, it could just be cheaper. I could probably shave everything that costs more than four out and uh, try it that way. But the one thing I would like to just add if I did that was probably more removal. Because the core creature package with the token splash is about as tight as it's going to get given the cards we have access to. You could run... Um, uh, what is it? You could run this, right? That's not bad. It's only black creature tokens, not just the white ones. So, like, Lingering Souls isn't really great. And this is triple black, which means you're going to even want more dual lands early. And again, I'm not... Like, there's there's never been a game where I've come even close to trying to activate a man land or something adorable. But you could run Mana Confluence at the very least, uh to, like, do this triple black thing. We are running Necropotence, right? This is a pretty decent uh, black black Lotus. <laughs> well, yeah, yes. But a Dark Ritual hit, right? So maybe, maybe instead of something else here, right? You just have to count how many black uh, things are in the deck to trigger it in the first place. Um, that seemed to be an issue. Like, I, there was barely a instance where I found reasons to run this. It was hard to... I can't play Necropotence on turn three, right? Like, it's just it's just so hard to get all of this to work. Grave Pact is a turn four play, and that is so rough. I'm trying to make room for the strategy, which means I'm not playing Mana Rocks well, of any kind. The two mana ones or the, you know, the rainbow-colored ones on three. So it's, like, so hard to Grave Pact and then have stuff in play. I keep mousing over stuff. And then have stuff in play after. Like, it's just hard they didn't answer your one two and three you play that and then what do you do after that they didn't like scramble to deal with it i never got into that situation in fact bastion of remembrance was probably better <laughs> this trigger is probably just better for you than uh the grave pact anyways just stealing life it's much more on theme too right 
it's actually winning the game at some point, eventually doing this as opposed to keeping your opponent off the board completely, which is very relevant though. I will, I will admit. Um, other than that, yeah, there's some pretty neat stuff in here. Like, yo, this is adorable. Look at that. Look at this. It's got text on it. It just never came up. Um, the games never really got to a point where I was playing four, fives, and sixes too many times. The fours kind of hit play sometimes, but like the fives and sixes just, it never got there, right? Like you can see the issue when you're not playing Mana Rocks, right? Like you got to make room for your strategy because you want to do that instead. And I'm kind of just didn't, I just didn't want to play Mana Rocks for once, see what would happen, <clears throat> see what would happen. And what happened was I just never got to these because <laughs> there's no time. But if you're running mana rocks, what are we taking out to to make room for them? Because it's just going to slow your strategy now, um, your main strategy. So, you know, it's up to the individual, really, how fast you want to be, how much of a curve you want for your ones and twos, in, per in particular your twos and threes, right? Because that's what you're playing instead of the mana rocks. So... Yeah, I don't know. We had a pack rat game that felt pretty neat, so that's cool. You know, that's something that might be a mana rock instead, but here it was it was neat to win with that. So yeah, I don't know. It was fun. I like it. When it wins, it's pretty cool. Uh, when it loses, it's pretty fast. <laughs> you just lose really fast, and you can move on. That's a plus. So yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you thought about this deck. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you with the next one next time. See you.